data nerds. In this video, we're gonna be going over what I'm learning as a data analyst in 2024. We're not only gonna be covering the core skills that are necessary to land a job, but we're also gonna be focusing on other tools during this AI revolution that we're in. A lot of the top analytical tools have been stagnant in development for years now. However, there've been a lot of upgrades this past year to help streamline analytics. Last year, I built an entire data analyst portfolio project without writing a single line of code. So the barrier to entry to become a data analyst and actually analyze data is getting lower and lower. Now, if you're new here, I'm Luke, a data analyst. My channel is all about tech and skills for data science. And previously in a past life, I've worked as a data analyst in a variety of roles from corporate America all the way to last year, working for the number one YouTuber, Mr. Beast. Now, prior to this, five years ago, before I was a data analyst, I was transitioning out of the military where I served on submarines. And it turns out in the civilian world, there's not a lot of need for these type of skills. But I love data and I decided to go this route. I loved it so much that I started this YouTube channel to share my findings. I've interviewed countless other data nerds in this journey and I've started to see the effect of these new AI technologies on our job. So I wanted to put together this video in order to roadmap what tools I think you should be learning as a data analyst and that I'll be sharing on this channel as well. But before we get into any futuristic tools, we need to look at what are the core tools that a data analyst should just generally know for their job. So as data analyst, let's look at some data. Here's my app, datanerd.tech, and I talk about it way too much. Anyway, it aggregates job postings for data nerds. And here I have the top skills listed in job postings for data analysts. First is the most popular skill of SQL, or if you're not a lazy English speaker, SQL. Now this is the programming language in order to communicate with a database. And if you look at this, there's a shit whack of databases in order for you to choose from. Which one do you choose? Well, more on that in a bit. So SQL tops the list as the most important skill of data analysts, and also a lot of different data nerds. Anyway, it's in almost half of all job postings. Next up is Excel, our favorite spreadsheet software. That is a tool that should be used for ad hoc analysis in order to do some quick calculations. But instead, companies are using it in ways that it shouldn't be using it and causing it to be a little overhyped. And this hype causes it to be the second most important skill as it's listed in one third of job postings. Next up are coding languages, which here we have Python and R. Now both these tools, in my opinion, are used to flex on your Excel coworkers that don't know how to code. And unlike Excel, with some of these languages, you can do everything from advanced analytics all the way to machine learning. And it's this reason that chatbots are using popular language like Python to perform analytics behind the scenes. Anyway, for R, they're only in about one of six jobs. But for Python, they're coming close to Excel and almost a third. And last up on this list are visualization tools, specifically Tableau and Power BI. These type of tools help you build interactive dashboards and visualizations for your non-data nerd friends. I've spent a week building some dashboards that my coworkers never used. So now that we have these top tools out of the way, let's actually dive into what I'm gonna be learning inside of each of these tools and how I'm applying AI to each. All right, first up is SQL. And for diving into each one of these technologies, we're gonna be referencing the 2023 developer survey from Stack Overflow. It surveys over 90,000 developers and has insights into leading technologies. Now I've tried out and used a lot of the different popular options here on this list. So which of these am I going to focus on this year? More importantly, that you should learn? Well, if we actually adjust this poll for professional developers, we see that Postgres is topping the list. However, when sorting for those learning to code, MySQL tops the list by far. Postgres is now down in fourth place. Now MySQL is a lot more beginner friendly, whereas Postgres is a bit more advanced. That's why we're seeing professional developers use it more. So which one am I going with? Well, there's also this poll on admired and desired. Desired is the proportion of respondents who want to use a technology. And admired are those that have used the same technology technology in the past year and want to continue to do so. For this, Postgres dominates the field. Not only is it the most desired, but it's also the most admired. I tend to weigh the admired score more because I want to understand what developers are actually using and what they want to continue to use. And with this, it's pretty clear they want to use Postgres and not MySQL. But as a beginner, I don't think you should be worried about whether you're going to pick the right database to start with. If you actually dive into the syntax for popular queries for both of these options, you find that they're actually pretty much the same. So if you learn the basics of MySQL, you can apply that to Postgres. So what exactly then am I gonna be focusing on with SQL if that syntax doesn't really matter? Well, I'm trying to learn how to use AI to speed up my workflow with writing SQL queries. Right now I'm using the AI coding assistant GitHub Copilot in order to do this. But I think I'm missing something. Yes, it can autocomplete along with answering my questions regarding queries, but I feel like there's so much more. Previously I was using ChatGPT and now a deprecated plugin Notable. All I had to do was ask it a question and it would generate the SQL on its own to query the data. Database. I didn't even have to know SQL, but that notable plugin got canceled last year and it ruined my entire course that I built on ChatGPT. 
That's a whole nother story. So now I'm actually looking for understanding what other tools are available to interact with SQL to speed up my workflow. So I'll be exploring that this year on this channel. All right, next up is Microsoft Excel. There were two major advancements last year, Microsoft 365 Copilot and Python in Excel. And they're both kind of related. Let me explain. First up is Copilot. Microsoft teamed up with OpenAI as they found out that ChatGPT is basically a freak in the sheets. They call this freak Microsoft 365 Copilot. With this, you can not only ask it questions about your data, of which it will provide some surface level insights, but the more important thing is it actually can dive into the data, analyzing it and providing graphs for you. Released last November, it will cost you an additional 30 bucks on top of your current Microsoft subscription. However, there's just one big catch. Microsoft is only allowing those that buy a minimum of 300 licenses to access this advanced tool. Doing some math, I only have to spend $13,000 a month in order to get this feature. Anyway, the second major feature inside of Excel is the introduction of Python. This allows you to, as you guessed it, run Python in Excel. Now I'll be honest, most of the stuff you can do with this new feature, you can already do with vanilla Excel. So why was this released now when both these technologies have been available for decades? Well, my theory is that it was really released to support making it easier to do calculations inside of Excel. If you recall how chatbots are now using Python for calculations, well, that's exactly what Microsoft has built here to support calculations inside of Excel. Anyway, I'm excited to dive into this Microsoft 365 Copilot as soon as they remove that 300 seat limit in order to better understand how to use this tool and better control Excel and the integration of Python, which I think it doubles down on the importance of learning Python, which the next thing we're gonna cover is programming language. So for this, we have two options, Python and R. Which one should you learn? Well, personally, I started with R and I think it's a great, easy to learn language to start with. And the Google Data Analytics certificate, which I'm a big fan of for beginners, also agrees with this. But as I've progressed in my career, I've needed a more advanced tool. Python is a multi-purpose language, whereas R is specifically designed for analytics and can't do a lot of the stuff that Python can do, whereas the vice versa is true. Shoot, this entire app of datanerd.tech was built using Python, from the data scraped from the internet to displaying it on this screen. R couldn't have done this. And that's part of my goal this year and using AI with Python to build out this app even more. And there were a lot of advancements last year with AI coding assistants. Not only are they good at speeding up your workflow, but they're also good at helping you learn a programming language. So GitHub Copilot tops the list and is popular among not only professionals, but also those learning to code. But after this poll was released, there's been a lot of big developments at the end of last year and a lot of competitors. Specifically, Google just introduced their new coding assistant called Duet AI, which not only works inside of things like VS Code and PyCharm, but you're also able to use this assistant inside of your different Google workspaces. Now, the other one I'm keeping my eye on is from the team behind the popular Python IDE, PyCharm. Now, the team at JetBrains just rolled out this tool that has a lot of similar functionality to Duet AI and GitHub Copilot. So I'm gonna be testing out this year all these assistants to find out which one is the best AI assistant. But more importantly, I'm interested in learning about how I can use these AI assistants to learn a programming language and then share it with you. So stay tuned, it has some future tutorials on how to learn things like Python and also SQL while using AI tools to speed up your learnings. All right, with that, let's get into the next one of Viz tools. With this similar to programming languages, you have two popular options. Should you learn Power BI or Tableau? I'm biased to Power BI, as I think it's a little bit more superior with its integration of Power Query and also DAX functionality. This allows me to clean and access data much more easily. The problem with Power BI is that it doesn't have a strong community when it comes to sharing dashboards. Whereas Tableau leads in this area with Tableau Public, as it is a resource for you to go and share your work with the community. Anyway, both these stagnant tools, both got some major AI upgrades this year. Power BI introduced a very basic version of Copilot inside of this app. And this allows you to write DAX functionality. And so it saves me a lot of time from having to jump back into ChatGPT and then back into Power BI. Now this is only a limited feature of Copilot as Microsoft has shown that they're planned to integrate it fully into Power BI to help even build out dashboards. And that would be a game changer. Now Tableau has also gotten some upgrades this year, although they haven't been as vocal I feel as Power BI. Well. Mostly. Tableau's parent company is Salesforce, and their CEO tried to poach members of the OpenAI team during the whole Sam Altman fiasco back in November. Bold move, Cotton. Now, Tableau and also Salesforce are not new to AI. They've been trying to develop their Einstein analytics now for years, and they're building out their competitor, Tableau GPT, which basically allows you to use natural language in order to analyze data. So when we look at all the top tools of a data analyst, 
we can see that they're affected greatly by all these different AI advancements. Now there's something not on this list that I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about. And Stack Overflow beat me to the punch by including this new section on AI search tools in their survey this year. It's pretty clear from these results that ChatGPT is dominating the field. We should basically also consider it taking up the second spot as well as hey. being AI is basically ChatGPT. Now, although it's been the dominant player, Google is trying to catch up as they recently launched Gemini, which they're saying is competitive with OpenAI's models. Although they fold us all with this hands-on demonstration, hey. I still think it's promising. There's even been leaked recently that they have an advanced version similar to that of ChatGBT+. So competition is heating up. Another one I've been testing recently is Perplexity, which I'm finding is replacing my normal workflow of going to Google. Instead, I'm using this, as not only it provides a quick summary of what I need, but also links to all the different sources. And it's fast AF. The space cowboy himself, Jeff Bezos, invested in Perplexity recently, now valuing this company at half a billion dollars. Now, for all these chatbots and AI assistants that I've been speaking of, they're all powered by large language models, or LLMs. And all the ones I spoke of previously are closed source. But I think there's hope for the open source LLM community. The leading competitor in this space, Mistral AI, just closed its last funding round at $415 million, valuating the company at almost $2 billion. Now this is crazy that a company is valued this high and their main product is available for you to just download and use for free. Anyway, I'm really eager about developments in the open source community because this allows two great things. One is improved data security. Now I can take these large language models and host them locally, process my data locally, and I don't have to worry about Sam Altman stealing it. Additionally, if I'm hosting this model locally, I don't have to pay Sam a subscription fee. I just have to pay my own server fees. And I think this is a win-win. Now, with all these different AI advancements that I've been covering to this video, you're probably a little worried that this is gonna replace your job as a data analyst. Well, let's look at these words from Sadia Nadella. And today we have a vision for a co-pilot that can empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And countless other business leaders and CEOs have echoed these same claims. These AI assistants aren't being made to replace you in your job, but instead they're made to actually assist you in your jobs. And a recent KPMG survey shows this. In it, they asked business leaders how generative AI will impact their headcount within an organization. And over half expected to expand the number of people in their organization. Most notably, some of the most popular roles they intended to add were around data scientists and analysts. So we have data to support that AI is not necessarily gonna take our job, and instead, business leaders want us to use it. On top of this, Harvard released this study which tested those that used AI in their jobs against those that don't use AI. And spoiler alert, consultants using AI were significantly more productive. They completed 12.2% more tasks on average and completed tasks 25.1% more quickly and produced significantly higher quality results, more than 40% higher quality compared to a control group. So I think the data is pretty clear. Not only is AI here to stay, but it's here to improve our jobs. All right, if you'd like to learn more about how I would go about learning to be a data analyst, check out this video right here. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.